In an explosive story from Reuters, they claim that the Proud Boys chairman Enrique Tarrio was a prolific informer for law enforcement, saying that shortly after he was arrested in 2012, he became an undercover informant for the feds. Now, he wasn't informing on the Proud Boys. He was informing on other criminals. According to the story, Enrique has denied this or denied recalling any of it. So we're going to be honest. Sounds legit. But a lot of questions being raised, and a lot of people want to know whether this is a smear or not, because think about it. If people believe that Enrique Tarrio is an informant, was or may be, they might not trust being a member of the Proud Boys, which is why the smear might be great for the establishment. You'll get a bunch of Proud Boys scared to talk about, you know, how they really feel. Maybe there's some FBI investigation. Maybe some things can be taken out of context. No one's going to want to associate with an FBI, with an FBI informant especially with the way Trump supporters feel about the FBI. So it could be a smear. However, the grand conspiracy is much more interesting, albeit there's not much evidence to suggest it, but that Enrique Tarrio and the Proud Boys are, well, on purpose, part of the deep state, all that good stuff. I don't believe it because there's, you know, I think there's tens of thousands of Proud Boys and they all just choose to be part of the Proud Boys. I guess the general idea is that Enrique Tarrio is leading the Proud Boys to an extent to make the right look bad. I don't know if that's uh, plausible in any sense of the time. I don't think it's true. But there are some concerns people have brought up because Enrique was uh, conveniently not at the storming of the Capitol in D.C. How about that? Now, look, I've interviewed Enrique Tarrio. I don't know much about his past. I know that he was arrested. He went to, I believe he went to prison. And uh it, it is what it is. I think grand conspiracies are a bit absurd to, to think that, you know, the feds you know, or, the, or the D.C. police arrested Enrique for having these. Ma- so uh, hold on, let me slow down. When Enrique went to D.C. the night before the I believe it was the night before the, uh, the Capitol riot, storming of the Capitol, he got arrested and was told not to come back to D.C. to stay away from D.C. And then some people ended up getting arrested. Some people associated with Proud Boys got arrested in, in the riots. So there are some people basically suggesting that it was awfully convenient. He got pulled out and had no choice but to leave. Now, I think it's silly. I think it's silly. I think they found a story about the dude who was, you know, Enrique was probably informing. It probably helped him with his sentence or something like that. And he's probably legitimately involved in the Proud Boys. But it is what it is, man. I'll tell you this. If uh, he was on the left, they would be screaming, I knew it. And this guy would be burned in all leftist activist groups. There might actually be some Proud Boys being like, oh, that's cool. He was working with law enforcement. Maybe. Let's read the story and then we'll see a bit of an update on what's going on with a lot of these people. The accusations made against the Proud Boys, you know, for those aren't familiar, Canada recently voted to have their government label the Proud Boys a terroristic entity. We'll see if that actually happens. Reuters reports Enrique Tarrio, leader of the Proud Boys extremist group, has a past as an informer for federal and local law enforcement, repeatedly working undercover for investigators after he was arrested in 2012, according to a former prosecutor and a transcript of a 2014 federal court proceeding obtained by Reuters. I just got to stress again, if he was an informer for local law enforcement, I kind of think the Proud Boys would like that. Maybe not the FBI, but I don't know, whatever. They say in the Miami hearing, a federal prosecutor an FBI agent and Tario's own lawyer described his undercover work and said he had helped authorities prosecute more than a dozen people in various cases involving drugs, gambling and human smuggling. I mean, the human smuggling part, that's like that's kind of a good thing on Enrique Tario's part, right? Now, drugs, I kind of roll my eyes. Like, what was the case about in terms of drugs? Is it someone selling to kids? OK, maybe that's not a good thing. You shouldn't be allowed to do that and good on him for stopping it. If it was someone minding their own business, that's probably dumb. Considering the severity of these cases, sounds like he was doing mostly some good stuff. I don't I don't I'm not a big fan of prosecuting gambling. I think if people want to gamble, they should be allowed to. But human smuggling, you mean to tell me that Enrique Tarrio, chairman of the Proud Boys, did undercover work to stop human trafficking? (laughs) That's good. Bravo, I guess. Is that supposed to be a bad thing? I don't know. It just it is what it is. Tario, in an interview with Reuters Tuesday, denied working undercover or cooperating in cases against others. Quote, I don't know any of this, he said. When asked about the transcript, I don't recall any of this. I got to stop right there. When people say I don't recall, okay, come on. 
you don't recall. That's typically, and, and you know, maybe I'm just being a little biased here. Maybe I shouldn't. But w- in my opinion, when people say, oh, I don't recall, it, it's their way of saying, I'm trying to deny it without getting in trouble later when it's proven to be true. So they'll ask you, like, did you buy that six, ca- you know, six pack of beer before the party? I, I don't recall. Because if you say I didn't, you're lying, you get in trouble. And if you say you did, you admit to something that may incriminate you. So I, I just don't remember. I don't, I, I don't know, man. Enrique, you don't remember if you were in court? I don't buy it. They say law enforcement officials and the court transcript contradict Tario's denial. In a statement to Reuters, the former federal prosecutor in Tario's case, Vanessa Singh, Johannes, confirmed that, quote, he cooperated with local and federal law enforcement to aid in the prosecution of those running other separate criminal enterprises, ranging from running marijuana grow houses in Miami to operating a pharmaceutical fraud scheme. Okay, pharmaceutical fraud scheme, I think may have been him. He got charged with that. I guess he was like relabeling something. I don't remember what he said. Stopping, you know, if somebody's growing pot, I'm not a fan of of people getting arrested for nonviolent offenses. Like if some dude wants to like, I, I just think it should be legal. You know, so I don't I don't think people should be cooperating with the feds in, in, you know, when it comes to victimless crimes, they call them crimes. They say Tario is a high profile figure who organizes and leads the right wing Proud Boys in their confrontations with those they believe to be Antifa. Oh, I love it. Antifa beats anybody they deem a fascist. The Proud Boys rarely, relative to Antifa, get into serious fights. They get into fights, though. Sometimes it's their fault. It happens. But it's totally imbalanced. Antifa is way worse, like substantially worse. So please, they believe to be Antifa. Sure. They said the Proud Boys were involved in the deadly insurrection at the Capitol January 6th. That's true. And what's interesting is that Enrique got arrested the night before and told to leave. And then he wasn't there. The records uncovered by Reuters are startling because they show that a leader of a far right group now under intense scrutiny by law enforcement was previously an active collaborator with criminal investigations. Washington police arrested Tario in early January when he arrived in the city two days. OK, so it was two days before the Capitol riot. He was charged with possessing two high capacity rifle magazines and burning a Black Lives Matter banner during a December demonstration by supporters of former President Donald Trump. The D.C. Superior Court ordered him to leave the city pending a court uh, date in June. Though Tario did not take part in the Capitol insurrection, the insurrection, I love it, at least five Proud Boys members have been charged in the riot. The FBI previously said Tario's earlier arrest was an effort to preempt the events of January 6th. The transcript from 2014 shines a new light on Tario's past connections to law enforcement. During the hearing, the prosecutor and Tario's defense attorney asked a judge to reduce the prison sentence of Tario and two co-defendants. They had pleaded guilty in a fraud case related to the relabeling and sale of stolen diabetes test kits. The prosecutor said Tario's information had led to the prosecution of 13 people on federal charges in two separate cases and helped local authorities investigate a gambling ring. Tario's then lawyer, Jeffrey Filer, said in court that his client had worked undercover in numerous investigations, one involving the sale of anabolic steroids, another regarding wholesale prescription narcotics, and a third targeting human smuggling. He said Tario helped police uncover three marijuana grow houses and was a prolific cooperator. Now, I'm not a fan of uh, the grow houses stuff. I think people should be allowed to, you know, it should be illegal, but it is illegal. So I don't know what you'd expect from somebody who's in prison and they're trying to stop crimes. It's a, it's a challenge. He, he did it. I, I don't, you know, is the left supposed to now associate law enforcement with the Proud Boys? I mean, dude's been arrested. Proud Boys are being arrested. I don't know if there's much to this story other than, aha, look at this, a guy who got arrested once cooperated with police. They say in the smuggling case, Tario, at his own risk in an undercover role, met and negotiated to pay $11,000 to members of that ring to bring in fictitious family members of his from another country, the lawyer said in court. Stopping human smugglers, man. That's good. Sorry, human trafficking is not good. It is unsafe. Many people get caught up in this. They think they're going to be they're going to be brought to this country and they are not. A lot of people on the left, I, I, they ignore this, and it's insane. If Enrique Tario, at great risk to himself, stopped human smugglers, wow, that's impressive. In an interview, Filer said he did not recall details about the case, but added, the information I provided to the court was based on information provided to me by law enforcement and the prosecutor. An FBI agent at the hearing called Tario a key component in local police investigations involving marijuana, cocaine, MDMA, or ecstasy. Miami FBI office declined to comment. They say there is no evidence Tario has cooperated with authorities since then. In interviews with Reuters, however, 
He said that before rallies in various cities, he would let police departments know of the Proud Boys plans. It is unclear if this is actually the case. He said he stopped this coordination after December 12th because the D.C. police had cracked down on the group. Look, the Proud Boys are pro-cop. I believe it. If they were, if Enrique was helping cops and if he was letting the cops know they were coming and it's, it's almost like they found that they're trying to find a way to smear Enrique Tario because they're leftists who are like, Ooh, look, he was an informant. And then people on the right are going to be like, uh-huh, <laughs> like, they like cops. I guess not so much anymore. I don't know what the point is. Maybe the idea is to smear Enrique so that people think that what the Proud Boys is doing is all part of some government operation or whatever. I don't know. They say Tario on Tuesday acknowledged that his fraud sentence was reduced from 30 months to 16 months, but insisted the leniency was provided only because he and his co-defendants helped investigators clear up questions about his own case. He said he never helped them investigate others. That comment contrasts with statements made in court by the prosecutor, his lawyer, and the FBI. The judge in the case, Joan A. Lennard, said Tario provided substantial assistance in the investigation and prosecution of other persons involved in criminal conduct. As Trump supporters challenged the Republicans' election loss in often violent demonstrations, Tario stood out for his swagger as he led crowds of mostly white Proud Boys. It's so hilarious how they have to do that because Tario himself is not white, but, but everyone else was. Confrontations, brawls, blah, blah, blah. They go on to mention, you know, Proud Boys founded. We get it. Tario, based in Miami, became the national chairman of the group in 2018. In November and December, he led the Proud Boys through the streets of D.C. after Trump's loss. Video shows him on December 11th with a bullhorn in front of a large crowd. To the parasites both in Congress and in that stolen White House, you want a war, you got one. The crowd roared. The next day, Tario burned the BLM banner. I don't know if he actually did. Somebody did. He claimed credit for it, but I don't think you can tell if it was him on video. He was just saying it. I guess because they were trying to say it was a hate crime. And then he argued that, you know, he's black. I got to tell y'all, DC doesn't operate that way, right? So I recently did a segment about this Pepe the Frog thing. Someone did a mural of Bernie Sanders. Someone else came later and turned Bernie into Pepe. It's kind of funny. DC is investigating as a hate crime. And a bunch of people on the right were like, that's ridiculous. But let me explain something. In DC, politics is considered a, a, a protected class. That means if someone's wearing a Trump hat and you attack them for, for the Trump hat, that is a hate crime. The reason for this is D.C. is where people have to do work and political parties often don't like each other. So they pass this law. And I'm not a fan of criminalizing intent. I think if it's illegal to punch someone, it's illegal to punch someone. But you got to understand that when they were investigating the Black Lives Matter thing as a hate crime, it wasn't so much about the the race in, in in Black Lives Matter. It was about the politics of it, asserting that certain politics are bad and burning it constitutes a hate crime in D.C. By all means, disagree with it. I'm just informing you of that fact. Former prosecutor Johannes said she was surprised that the defendant she prosecuted for fraud is now a key player in the violent movement that sought to halt the certification, uh, certification of Biden. I knew that he was a fraudster, but had no reason to know that he was also a domestic terrorist. Whoa, man, things are getting crazy. All of these people now, it's it. And, and, and now that uh, uh, Canada has voted on this, this resolution, we'll see if it actually gets done at the, at the federal level in Canada, if they actually issue the statement that Proud Boys are terrorists. It's coming. If the Canadian MPs succeed, they voted. It's there. If the federal government of Canada agrees and does label the Proud Boys terrorists, that's going to have a very serious impact on the Proud Boys in the United States. It theoretically should give the U.S. government some more, some enhanced powers based on like the Patriot Act and things like that. So check this out. I'm going to show you just briefly this this clip from Wall Street Journal. Video investigation. Proud Boys were Proud Boys were key instigators in Capitol riot. I'm not going to play the video. I think it's a bit over the top. Just because there are people who claim to be Proud Boys and support the Proud Boys, does that mean that there is an official organization that that you know planned all of this, or that it's evidence? I should say of one or evidence Enrique Tario planned it, or it was a setup or anything like that. It's basically the narrative they're trying to go with. The New York Times says Proud Boys under growing scrutiny in Capitol riot investigation. Officials are trying to determine to what extent far right groups planned the assault in advance. Right. So the Wall Street Journal can make that claim. Let's see the evidence. I think it's it's probable there were a lot of Proud Boys there. I think it's probable, extremely likely that many of the proud, many of the people who stormed into the building were probably Proud Boys out of the several hundred. Many doesn't I'm not saying most or, or all. I'm saying a decent amount. But does that mean that there was a meeting 
where the Proud Boys came together and they read their, their, their charter rules for speaking and then blew the conch shell and then planned all of this. I honestly don't think that's all that likely. I think it's just birds of a feather flock together, a standalone complex. In this instance, almost a conspiracy, right? So let me explain. A lot of people, uh, uh, you know, Antifa is organized in a certain capacity. There are cells that identify as Antifa. But at certain events like the D.C. riots on January 20th, 2017, I think it was the 20th, they just show up, they wear all black, and then they just act in concert. There's no conspiracy. They didn't plan it, sort of. So they actually tried charging Antifa with conspiracy in the D.C. riots back, you know, four years ago. It didn't work, mostly because they didn't plan anything. All they know is you show up and you wear black. That's a common thing everyone knows. You don't need to be told to do it. Hence, this is more like a standalone complex when individuals all act in a similar way, which creates the impression of a conspiracy, but there is no concerted effort. Or, I'm sorry, there is no conspiracy. There is a concerted effort. So in this instance, a bunch of proud boys already have it within themselves to be in D.C. and go and do this. And then when it happens, they're like, ah, but did they plan it? Then it's a conspiracy. And it's probably like, no, but I wouldn't be surprised if they break into the messages of some of these people find something to use to justify conspiracy. And then there you go. Why? They're throwing the book at these. No, they're not throwing the book. They're throwing the the bookshelf, maybe even the whole library. They're going to lock them in the library. They want to make an example out of these people. Check this out from USA Today. Capital riot inquiry grows to 400 suspects. Feds expect to bring sedition charges. Sedition is very serious. They say the far-reaching investigation into the deadly capital siege January 6th continues to grow. More than 400 suspects have been identified by federal authorities who expect to bring sedition charges against some of those linked to the insurrection. We are working on those sedition cases, said Michael Sherwin, the chief federal prosecutor overseeing the inquiry. And officials expect the investigations to bear fruit very soon. I love it. You literally have months a year of riots from Antifa, the destruction of building, things being burned down. Where are the arrests? You know, a lot of people are upset that the FBI puts their full weight behind a pole cord in a garage for the, you know, that guy Bubba uh, over, at the, over at NASCAR. They put their full weight into the Capitol and Antifa just romps about and runs them up. Yeah. But let me be honest with you guys. I do think there's a bias for sure. There's a double standard, obviously. But you got to understand when the Proud Boys got into a fight in New York City with Antifa and the cops eventually started questioning everybody, Antifa ran away. The Proud Boys told them everything. So then when the prosecutor said we're charging all of them with gang violence, the cops said, well, Antifa, they were wearing masks. We couldn't see their faces and they're gone. We don't know who they were. Oh, these guys gave us all their information. You don't talk to cops, man. Not to be disrespectful, but you don't. You don't do it. It's funny. I was watching Law and Order the other day. And in Law & Order, they basically always have a scene. I don't care which Law & Order is. They're all the same. I mean, Law & Order is a great show, mind you. But but they're all basically the same where the detectives will walk up to someone, ask them questions, and the person will answer the questions, and then they'll move on. It's the stupidest thing you can do. And I don't mean to be disrespectful to cops. I understand their job. But listen, to a hammer, everything looks like a nail, okay? Any any lawyer worth their way is going to tell you, you never, under any circumstances, speak to a police officer. And I'm not talking about if they're investigating something. I'm talking about if you see Officer Friendly in the street corner says, How, how's it going, ma'am? You don't say anything. You nod your head, you smile, and you wave. People don't get it. I don't think all cops are bad, but I do think there is a system and you're not supposed, there's a reason why we have a Fifth Amendment to the right to remain silent, because you should. And I know maybe it makes a job harder for the cops. Well, too bad. Anyway, I digress. The reason why I think we see the feds going after these people and they're going to bring these charges is because these people don't wear masks. They, they don't look. You Antifa knows what they're doing. They're organized, strategic. The people at the Capitol are a bunch of random people who just showed up and then did something dumb. So they call it an insurrection. They try and claim it was premeditated. Oh, please. If it was premeditated, these people would have actually done something instead of just wander around bewildered. Some of these people did. Some of them were nuts. Most of the people there had no idea what was going on. Sorry, you don't actually have an insurrection or a revolution or 1776 when a few hundred people enter a building. It was really, really dumb of these people. Many of them now are facing the consequences. And it's really dumb of what of Antifa to do what they do. The problem is Antifa's experience, organizers, leaders going back decades who tell them how to dress, what to do, where to go, who to call. During Occupy, the National Lawyers Guild gives out their number. Everyone writes the phone number really big on their arms. 
That way, when they get locked up, if they're given the opportunity to place a phone call, because you're not always, they can call. I think you have an op- you're allowed to call your lawyer, and that's the point. So they're all pre-planned. The people who get arrested at the Capitol, the people who get arrested in right-wing events, they have no idea where they're going, what to do. No one can bail them out, and then they're just lost in the system. You'll notice in many of these uh, instances of the left protesting, you watch a video of an arrest, and you'll hear something. What's your name? What's your name? They'll ask over and over again. And as the person is being dragged away, they'll yell their name. That way, their allies in these nonprofits and organizations can get them out of jail. Conservatives don't get this. They don't play that same game. So when they get arrested, it's going to be a lot harsh, more harsh on them, harsher on them, whatever. Long story short, um, when it comes to Enrique Tarrio, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I, I think it's, he probably informed to get a reduced sentence and whatever. It is what it is. I don't care. I'm sure the left already doesn't like him, so I'm not sure that matters. And he's probably just carried on his personal business, and he's probably not involved in any of that stuff now. But he does. He said himself, you know, tells the, the, the cops when, when the Proud Boys are coming in. I think that's it. I think that's it. I think the big issue here with why they're cracking down so hard on the right is because they can. Because the left is too slippery. Law enforcement is bewildered. And, and, and just look, outpaced, outlapped, outranked, outskilled, all of your capacity. The FBI is not capable, not smart enough. I know there's a lot of people who are probably like, come on, the feds. Dude, they're not. When you have 500 people all wearing black who have no phones on them because they strategized everything and they show up, the D.C. police are like, oh, what do we do? We don't know. We're stupid. They don't know what to do. They can't counter it. Now, when that Michael Reinald guy in Portland did his thing, they tracked him down. They killed that guy. There, is a few, there are a few instances where the feds can figure it out. But for the most part, I think the feds like the idea that people view them as this all-powerful entity, the FBI particularly. They've got power. They've got spying tools. They can do nasty stuff. But you'd be surprised how limited that actually goes. The people who operate in Antifa do things like they use encrypted messengers and they put their phones in their freezers when they're talking about stuff. They turn on water faucets to create white noise and then put their phones by the faucet and then talk about stuff. They make it hard to be tracked. It doesn't mean that the FBI is bad at what they do. It just means that Antifa and the far left know how to create hurdles and it makes it hard for the feds. And often the feds can't do anything about it because they're not good enough to. Does the government really want to spend a million bucks tracking down one random guy in a black sweater through a brick? No. But what if they don't have to? What if it's a, 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 a proud boy who was walking around and they have a photo of him? It costs them nothing. It's opportunity. It's ease. That's, the, that's, that's what's really happening. I'll leave it there. Next segment's coming up at 4 p.m. over at YouTube.com slash Timcast. Thanks for hanging out, and I will see you all then.